Hey guys, welcome to the Knot of the Week. Today we're going to be continuing our paracord projects with the Turk's Head. You may remember the Turk's Head from some other things that we've done, like these uh, paddle wrapping projects that we've showed on ITS before. But the Turk's Head is a decorative knot. It's a really nice way to kind of set some decorative knot work apart. So, you know, you can see I've just kind of got some overhand knots in the wrapping here on this paddle, and then I've got a Turk's head on the top and the bottom of this. So let's get into how to tie it. It can be a little complicated, so bear with me. All right, so for this demonstration of the Turk's head, which is a decorative knot, I've got about six feet of paracord here that I'm going to be using to tie this. There's really no rhyme or, or method to determining how much paracord you need for a Turk's head. It really just depends on the, the size of the object you're going to be wrapping around. So, for instance, with this paddle that I wrapped, you may need, uh, I believe this was about a four foot section on each one of these smaller Turk's heads that are on this paddle. So, first thing you're going to do is you can tie a lot of the Turk's head stuff on your hand, which is how I'd recommend starting to learn how to tie the Turk's head. So what I'm going to do is start with the kind of the standing part of the line. I've got, you know, a good maybe four to six inch section here that I'm going to start laying across three of my fingers. I'm going to wrap over and across is the first thing that I'm going to do. Then I'm going to come around and I'm going to cross over that standing part so it's going to look like this. And where I'm going to be going is underneath this line. So I wanted to say that first so it didn't get confusing. So I'm going to take the other end, which is now the working end, and I'm going to come underneath this right here. So you'll start out with something that looks like this. That's the start. If yours doesn't look like this, uh, fix it so you are looking like this to start because that's very important to start this way. So then I'm going to kind of come around this way and the next thing I'm going to do is split this. So I'm going to cross from left to right with these strands, making an open space here. And this working end is going to go into that space that I've created. So again, I'm going to come inside this from right to left, working down. And you can start to see that pattern emerging. And then I'm going to continue to come around here. I'm going to do that one more time. So I'm going to open up a space here for this to come through the working end. And now what I'm going to be left with is a gap. So this opening has the working end coming off of this side. You can see that over here. And the standing part coming off of this side. So Standing part is coming to the left, working end is coming to the right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another twist in this and instead of putting this end through like we were before, I'm actually going to work with the standing end. So the standing end is going to come in just like so. So now the standing end is coming through there and now this end, this is the complicated part so pay attention here, the standing end is going to come right through here. So that's going to open up. Standing part is going to come here and it's going to follow the, I'm sorry, the working end is going to follow the standing end and run parallel with it. So it is going to come here and start working this way. And it'll start to make sense here in a minute when I pull this through. So this is what I mean by running parallel. So now the, the working end and the standing end are running parallel with each other. So this is now going to just kind of tuck in under here, the standing part, and kind of stay out of our way. And I'll get to what is done with that standing end here in a second, but again, that's just going to tuck out of the way. So now we've got a pattern that we're going to follow with the working end. So as this is running parallel with the standing end, you're just going to actually continue that around the Turk's head. So here's our working end. I will continue to trace parallel to that as we come around. 
So again, running parallel, it's going to look something like this. Be careful with the paracord twist if you're using paracord for this, because it does like to twist up. And you'll see that as I pull it through, it kind of twists on me and I have to twist like that as I pull that through. So once you solve the mystery or the riddle of that first part of this wrap, everything else is fairly self-explanatory. And again, you're just following this around. It's the same pretty much the whole way around. So you can already see that the, I guess the circumference of the Turk's head is determined by how large your wrapping is started. So if you wanted to change this thing up and make it different sizes, you could start with a wrapping that starts larger or smaller. So you can see that standing part is there again, just to kind of talk through that again. We're just going to bypass that. It's going to kind of stay out of the way on the inside of this wrapping for now. And we'll address that in just a little bit. And we're almost through a complete turn with this. So you can see there's nothing special. All you're doing is just continuing to wrap this parallel to the other line. So if you wanted to build this Turk's head you know, with more than kind of two wraps, you could continue to go with this. So now you can see that we've come to the part at which this starts becoming three lines if we were to keep going. So right now that standing part is to the inside here and this is here. So what I would do if I was going to finish this off with just a, a two wrap Turk's head I would trim this off on the inside after I got this tightened around the object. So, you know, to, to bring back the example of the, the paddle here, this was a looser Turk's head until I slipped it over the paddle and then tightened it up and trimmed it. So the actual inside of that Turk's head looks similar to this where you can see those lines in and I just trimmed it and just pushed those back through the Turk's head and those are just kind of to the inside because you can't really tell where the Turk's head stops and where it begins if you do it that way. So again, if we were just to continue this, you can see if I were to just keep this going, now instead of two wrapped, two wraps around the Turk's head, it would now start to become larger and become three. And as we worked our way around, these other wraps that are two would become three as well. So that is how to wrap the Turk's head. And again, the most frustrating part of one of these is the beginning. So pay close attention to how you start one of these because that will largely determine how it winds up in the end. Stay tuned for a new Knot of the Week every Tuesday. And if you're enjoying what we're doing here on our Knot of the Week series, please consider joining the Crew Leader membership linked below in the description. Thanks for watching.